This is how Japanese school food is made in Japan. So I'm back with another Made in Japan video. Before I showed you how train bentos were made, but this time we're gonna go inside of a factory so I can show you how kids' school food is made. But before we start, like always, if you wanna see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you guys wanna help support the channel, check out the Tokyo Japan merch. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, then check out my Discord community. That said, I've always been interested to see how all of this was done, so let me just take you inside and let's find out. So here I am bringing you another Made in Japan hitter where I uncover how things are uniquely crafted in Japan. This time how real deal Japanese school lunches are made. Called Kyushoku, it's served in all Japanese elementary schools and most junior high schools. It's known for its well balanced and varied menus all planned by a certified nutritionist. Okay so we've been here before, you know what's gonna happen, let's do this. And there you go, let's go inside. So I'm just in the entrance right here and I think we've done this enough times so maybe you can just follow one of the workers in. We're going B.I.G on this one. Today, I've got special access to visit the Musashino City School Lunch and Dietary Education Promotion Foundation. Damn, that was long. Servicing 18 schools in total with 181 hardworking staff. I'm going inside to one of their massive Japanese school food kitchens. So large in scale, I want to call it a food factory to better capture its size. It's so massive that it produces food for eight different schools each and every day. This ain't no regular school cafeteria kitchen. Oh, the deliveries are here. So morning start at 7.30 a.m. as the food must be prepared, cooked, and then shipped out all before lunchtime. Ready to eat for eight different schools with a total of 2,700 students. Workers use a special docking room to receive the food where only one door is opened at a time in order to minimize outside debris from entering the facility. Once inside, workers thoroughly inspect the food by taking its temperature in addition to paying attention to strict government sanitary guidelines. Oh cool, let's see what this guy's doing over here. Excuse me, can I talk to you? Hi. What are you checking? Oh, what's the percentage of food that doesn't pass? So how long have you been working here? So do you have to do other jobs as well? Which one do you like the most? Thank you. Today's school lunch main dish is a teriyaki yellowtail fish. Can't wait to see how it's prepared. So this is where all of the food prep begins. After delivery, vegetables must be washed, cut, and peeled in addition to any other specific prep unique to Japanese ingredients. And since Japanese school lunches are rich with vegetables, it takes a fair amount of skilled hands to get the job done. About 40 total. I mean, 80 if I were counting both hands. Anyway, root vegetables like burdock naturally come in with lots of dirt and grit, so the kitchen uses specialized machines to wash them off. But the majority of the vegetables are prepared by hand. At this kitchen, all the vegetables are sourced from local farmers so the kids can eat the freshest produce possible every day. Which is why some are still sporting that farm fresh soil. All in all, it means that Japanese school kids can enjoy fresh seasonal food throughout the entire school year. In fact, it's all a part of Japan's food education system, which they even have a word for, joku iku. See, in Japan, lunchtime itself is considered food education as opposed to a simple break between classes. Japanese believe that providing their youth a balanced and delicious meal every day at lunch naturally teaches them good eating habits and what they should be eating outside of school. No matter the family's income level, every student is guaranteed one healthy and balanced meal once per day. Oh damn, it's an apple convention in here. Sweet juices, they even have a full on apple peeler to help them minimize the prep time. Once peeled, the apple still needs that personal touch to get finished off. Finally, the apple slices are placed into containers ready to be served. How do you like them apples? 
So before I continue, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features features such as threaded comments, replies, and likes to help engage your community. And my personal favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. So there you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. All right, let's continue on. Let's see what they're doing in this room over here. So this is where they steam the rice. Wow, so many giant rice cookers. Apparently, each giant pot can cook up to 700 servings of rice at one time. And that colander filled with rice weighs about 30 kilos, 66 pounds. That's quite a workout every day. So after the rice has been soaked, it goes into a vat of boiling hot water. Then, after it's boiled for two minutes, the lid is quickly opened. The rice is stirred and the lid replaced to let cook for 30 minutes, absolutely making sure to not open the lid until then to maintain a high temperature. Let's go ask some questions over here. Hi, what are you doing right now? Oh, what kind of rice do you use? Why is that? What's the most challenging thing when cooking this much rice? So what's the key then to making delicious rice? Cool, the rice is finished. Damn, they really go grave digger style on that rice. Apparently the workers say it's pretty exhausting to scoop it all out, but I guess it's all worth it because surprise surprise, it's the most served carb in Japanese school lunches over bread and noodles. And each container needs to be weighed precisely to serve the exact number of students for each class in each school. It's definitely a team effort to work fast and efficiently to get it all ready by lunchtime. So this looks like the main kitchen area. Now, the workers prepare the dashi for the soup called tonjiru, as well as for other dishes. And it's one of the key ingredients for many Japanese dishes. And here, they're making it from scratch using kombu and katsuo bushi, kelp and smoked and fermented skipjack tuna. Tonjiru itself is basically a traditional Japanese soup with vegetables, tofu, and pork. It requires a lot of different vegetable ingredients, hence the team of workers cutting an assortment of vegetables. There's quite a bit of nutrition and a lot of love goes into just one bowl of tonjiru. Oh cool, I think there's some miso action going on over here. Okay, now we're cooking. For today's soup, the workers are using two types of miso, white and red, the combination called awase miso in Japanese, which complement each other's flavors and creates a deeper umami taste. Once all the meat, soup, vegetables, and other ingredients have been separately prepared, they're all mixed together for the final cooking. Damn, that's more ingredients than I eat in a week. So I guess this area is where they prepare the grilled fish. Time for that main dish hitter. At this Japanese school kitchen, the fish are marinated by hand and today into a teriyaki sauce. Once fully marinated, it's trayed and moved to the giant ovens to be grilled, each oven capable of cooking up to 100 pieces at one time. Damn, that's efficient. Hey, he's eating on the job. What are you doing? What are you exactly checking for? What if you're not satisfied? Uh, I see. But to be honest, have you gained weight doing this? So what do you like most about this job? And what's your favorite menu item? Cool, thanks. 
Apparently, not just the fish is taste tested, but every single dish that's going out to the 2700 kids must be checked before packing to ensure its taste and quality. Oh, I think she's preparing a traditional Japanese side dish. More of the chopped vegetables prepared earlier are now going to be cooked. And like all the dishes today, the workers must follow the recipe precisely in order to produce a consistent taste and quality. That's quite a lot of recipes considering the main menu changes every day. Plus, the kitchen creates one to two new menu items every month so the kids don't get tired of the food. Hi, what's that? <laughs> Is there anything difficult about cooking at this scale? What's your favorite dish on the menu? Interestingly, the most popular dish among the school kids is their curry rice. Makes me want to try it myself. By the way, the metal containers used to transport the food are so thick that the food is still hot when it's served to the kids at school. Okay, so this is where they load all the food that's been prepared. Now, the food carts are loaded onto the trucks with the delivery scheduled to arrive at the school between 10.30 to 11.30, just in time for lunch. And there you go, all the food is packed up and the trucks are leaving now. And this entire food education system is supported by the Japanese government. Meaning that on average, the monthly school lunch fee paid by parents at public schools is about 4,300 yen at elementary schools and 4,900 yen at junior high schools. About 33 to 38 US dollars a month. And here we go, lunch is served. Let me try a quick bite. That is amazing. So there you go, that is how school food is made in Japan. If you guys like this video, like always, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.